So what active guidance does is quickly highlights you the key points from the question, which help you to rule out other possible options. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. Hi guys, this is Dr. Patil here and today we are connecting to discuss one high yield MCQ from the recently launched extremely versatile Prep Ladder NTSS QBank 2.0. Okay, so before I take you through the question, we all know the trend. What is the trend? We have what which is the kind of question that were asked in the last NTSS, right? So we all know the questions are now clearly making a transition from the so-called one-liners to clinical questions. But how do you define clinical questions? If I ask you a question about a clinical sign, will that be called as a clinical question? No, right? So what, what are these clinical questions? The talk of the town, so-called clinical questions? Well, the clinical questions actually put you in the shoes of a physician or a treating doctor. All the one-liners actually test your memory. Right? They are designed to test your memory. But all these clinical questions are basically designed to put you in the shoes of a treating physician and then assess you about your right approach to the case right so every question ultimately has two important things to be known about the thing number one is what is the question about what disease the question is talking about right so for that we might have to go through the layers of information before we get to know the diagnosis of the particular patient in, in, in question once you know what is the diagnosis then the question may be about the diagnosis so the last closing statement of every question which is called clinical is basically a one-liner but you have to reach to that one liner by dissecting through the layers of information so you can even categorize questions based on the number of layers of information or steps involved before you reach out to the diagnosis it could be a simple two-step procedure process where some basic uh, lab investigation and one complaint is given to you and you know with that it has to be a case of particular disease for example if i say anti-ccp positive and a small joint polyarthritis with early morning stiffness lasting for more than one hour, then you know I'm talking about a case of rheumatoid arthritis, right? So two simple two-step process, or it could be multi multi-layered uh, processing as much as six steps. Okay, so that's how the questions are designed basically. So it could be a two-step process or a six-step process, and in between anything is possible. Six-step process would definitely consume a lot of time, so you should be able to understand how to quickly go through those questions. And the best way to become efficient in dissecting those very lengthy questions is by solving more and more MCQs. You can train your subconscious process to quickly scan through the key points and then catch on to the diagnosis as soon as possible. Okay, so the Preplater NTSS uh, QBank 2.0 is designed to help you in this process. Okay, so let us take this one question. This is from the QBank and the question goes like this. A 32 year old female is on hydralazine for hypertension and presented with polyarthralgia with early morning stiffness lasting for more than 30 minutes. Joint aches are worse in the morning and get better as the day progresses. On physical examination, she has pleural rub and pericardial rub. USG chest confirmed pleural effusion and mild pericardial effusion. She is positive for RA factor, anti-CCP and ANA are positive. So three things are positive, RA factor, anti-CCP, ANA. Which of the following is false about her condition? Okay, so options are positive antihistone antibodies, positive anti DSDNA, no renal involvement, coca genes more affected. Okay, so what is this question all about? That's, that is the first point we have to address when we deal with such questions, right? So this question is actually about drug induced lupus. Let us debate why it is drug induced lupus. Why not rheumatoid arthritis? Why not the conventional non drug induced SLD? Okay, so point number one. First, always, I keep telling this, always focus on epidemiology. When you're learning, when you're preparing for clinically oriented MCQ patterned examinations, epidemiology is very, very important. Okay, so what we understand, we understand that when we talk about SLE or rheumatoid arthritis, females are certainly more affected than males. So that's a factor here. Will this help us to distinguish between SLE, drug induced and rheumatoid arthritis? Obviously, no. But if they say that male, if this patient's question, the, the patient in question was a male, then that definitely leans in favor of drug induced. I'll tell you why. So when you compare the male to female ratio, in case of rheumatoid arthritis, right, females are more affected than males. In case of SLE, we know classical, the number 9 is to 1, right? Females are more affected than males. But when it comes to drug induced lupus erythematosus, males are equally affected to females. So if the question was particularly talking about males, then the examiner would have thought about that 
and uh, he, he he wants you to commit to the diagnosis of drug induced lupus to, in the beginning itself then you would have mentioned that it is a male patient that we are talking about okay second thing the question mentions hydralazine yes hydralazine is a well known drug uh, implicated in the pathogenesis of drug induced lupus so we are all familiar with this hydralazine is a drug that is known to cause sle right okay now this patient's main presenting complaint is polyarthralgia with early morning stiffness lasting for more than 30 minutes so this goes on to say that the patient is having inflammatory polyarthritis right ems lasting for more than 30 minutes suggestive of inflammatory polyarthritis so when it is inflammatory polyarthritis definitely we are talking about some rheumatological disorder for sure right it's not that patient is presenting with polyarthralgia because of some systemic illness it is definitely a rheumatological condition that we are talking about here okay now the next thing is on examination patient has a pleural rub and pericardial rub so there is evidence of serositis present okay so all the more i'm sure that we are talking about a rheumatological disease here now the last factor ra factor anti ccp and ana are positive so when i say ana is positive i'm sure you will think of sle and when i say ra and anti ccp are positive we know that anti ccp is much specific than ra i would strongly think of rheumatoid arthritis but still my diagnosis is drug induced lupus why okay if you look at all the classification criteria and even some archaic diagnostic criteria put forth for rheumatological disorders mostly you will hear a standard template one standard statement that you can consider this case as a sle or ra when you don't have an alternative explanation or when you don't have when you don't have any other better explanations for the manifestations so in this case all these manifestations can be explained by drug induced lupus and the fact that ra factor and anti ccp anti ccp specific for rheumatoid arthritis can still occur in normal population can still be positive in various other rheumatological disorders yes it is relatively more specific in comparison to ra factor but it's not an absolute diagnostic tool otherwise we would have diagnosed all ra cases just based on the anti ccp right so anti ccp can occur positive in normal population meager numbers it can be positive in other rheumatological disorders it can also be positive in sle at up to 10% of patients with sle may be uh, anti ccp positive right okay so in case of uh, arthritis differentiation between sle versus rheumatoid arthritis it is based on the joint erosions and not merely based on the antibodies okay so having said that because here the history i mean the diagnosis of sle or ra should come next and first drug induced lupus because there is a clear cut evidence of an inciting agent being prescribed to the patient right another factor is the age of the patient yeah i forgot to talk about it 32 years conventionally speaking the rheumatoid arthritis is diagnosed after 50 years in the western world and after 40 years in india maybe like 35 to 40 years so here it is a typical young female that we are seeing at this age very few number of rheumatoid arthritis patients are diagnosed so that is one more factor we need to keep in mind if you look at the the literature you will clearly agree that in the western world the age of diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is definitely beyond 40 in india most cases are beyond 40 few cases under 40 so that is one more uh, epidemiological factor which makes me lean towards sle now when i talk about sle now here there is a clearly well known inciting agent exposure present so keeping all that in mind my diagnosis here will be drug induced lupus okay so what are the factors we know about the drug induced lupus we know that the drug induced lupus are 100% ana positive right all those patients are ana positive that is the first thing we know then in terms of the male female ratio as i have already told you males and females are equally affected okay that is the second thing then third thing famously we all know that patients with uh, drug induced lupus erythematosus generally don't have cns lupus and they are not at risk of developing lupus nephritis both are not known to occur in these patients and we also know that anti ds dna titers correlate with the risk of lupus nephritis so even logically going by that anti ds dna is usually negative in patients with drug induced lupus they are ana positive and specifically they are anti histone antibody positive but they are negative for anti ds dna that correlates with the renal outcome right so there is no renal involvement there is no cns involvement and yeah so generally when we talk about sle the the standard saying is the american blacks are at the extreme risk in comparison to whites right that's the data we have so slightly blacks are more affected than whites but when it comes to drug induced lupus whites or caucasians are more affected than the blacks right so option d is a true statement 
No renal involvement is a true statement. Antihistone antibody positivity is a true statement. Positive anti-DS DNA is a false statement. So option B is my right answer for the question. Right. So to learn such approaches to question, particularly when there are controversial factors like this statement, I would recommend you to spend significant amount of time, at least one third of your preparation time on the NITSS QBank 2.0. The QBank 2.0 comes with some very important high yield key features. What are those? Number one, active guidance. Okay. What is active guidance? Now we just discussed the question and in the question there were layers of information processing. Well, when you first solve the question, definitely you read through the question, you, you do your mental exercises before you commit to the answer. Once you have solved it, whether right or wrong, you, you want to understand whether your approach was wrong. Sometimes we might just get the right answer because of our thought process, but which may not be in sync with the reality. Right? So we want to understand whether our approach was right, whether our answer was right. So to do that, again, you need to read through the question. It takes a lot of time. right? So what active guidance does is quickly highlights you the key points from the question, which help you to rule out other possible options so that highlighting will save a lot of time and will also make sure that you remember those key points based on which you were able to rule out or rule in some of the options so that active guidance is probably the first time that a q bank for medical education is integrating right so make the most of it when you solve the mcqs second thing is there is a in integration with the video lectures that is obviously very much necessary because once you go through the videos if you are able to solve the relevant questions then the key points that you learned from the videos will start getting cemented in your brain. So that augments your memory, right? So that is the second feature. Then obviously now the, the trend is about clinical questions and image based questions. So the QBank is updated in this regard. Then a QBank covers most of the exam oriented topics from the standard textbook. So for medicine, I can say most of the topics from Harrison, which are relevant for exam are addressed through the QBank. Okay. And the questions are based on the latest exam pattern for NITSS. So what is the exam pattern? Some of you have already witnessed, those who are not witnessed, go through the QBank and we will start understanding what is the exam pattern, where the exam is heading or what is the strength. Okay. And last but not the least, the question bank is also integrated with treasures. So if you want to learn a little more about this particular topic, mainly focused on the key one liner MCQ point that you should know, right? this integration with treasures will definitely help. So I would recommend you to take out the time, at least one third of your time on the QBank 2.0 NITSS and I will be wishing all the best from my side as well as my whole team of Repladder and I hope all of you will achieve your dream. Best of luck guys.